Hello and welcome to this uh, Next Substance Painter or Substance Designer rather tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to create a spider's web because uh, it kind of demonstrates um, something I had trouble with when I first started which was what, how do I make circles and even more importantly how do I make concentric circles. So um, this demonstrates that nicely in that we have these nice kind of circular patterns in our web. Uh, so we'll start off with a new package. I'm using the substance, uh, sorry, the painter filter specific, and I'll just call it uh, spider web. There we go. Everything else is okay. Let's click. There we go. Now I can get rid of these inputs because I'm not going to use them. Um, but what we need to start with is a shape. We need like a, a straight line, well, mostly straight. Uh, which we can then use to map into a circle. So let's press space and type in shape and with that shape then I'm going to take the y uh, for, uh, the y, y size down to about 0 0.01. I'll probably make it smaller earlier but I'm leaving it quite chunky for display purposes uh, so you can actually see what's going on. Okay, so to turn this into a circle, what I need is a shape mapper. So if I press space and type in shape again, uh, we should see shape mapper down here. There we go. And what this will do is take the input shape and map it into the shape I want it. And we have two options. We have circle, which it's done quite nicely, but we also have polygon, which will put it into a kind of, you know, um, hexagonal, stroke octagonal, uh, however many sides you set it, um, shape and you can up that of course and we can down it and we can do all sorts, ah that's not the pattern, <laughs> sorry that's not what I meant, that's not the parameter I thought it was, um, let me up this, so there we go it's the segments I need to up, so I'm going to put it to 10, the pattern amount is how many patterns it puts between the points, so if you have one it will be one, if you have two it will be two, uh, so it will repeat the straight line. Now as it's a straight line that doesn't really make much sense at the moment because they're just straight lines. Uh, so what I'd actually like to do is to put a little bit of organicness in this by uh, warping this line a little bit. So if I select the noodle between and press space and type in warp and select that go in there. Now it won't do anything at the moment because we need an input into it. We need something to tell it where I want it to warp and for that uh, we'll use uh, some sort of pattern. So uh, da, 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 da. let's press space and uh, we could use a clouds. Actually what I really want is uh, the thing that I can't remember the name of and can never remember the name of but possibly starts with B uh, da, 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 no, no, no. Oh, what's what's the name of the noise? Come on, John, use your brain. It's here somewhere. Uh, but let's just type in noise. It should come up. Perlin noise. That's the one I was looking for. Uh, so we have three D Perlin noises there. Let's go down. Got some dirt, some fractal sums, some grunges. Uh, we should have Perlin down here somewhere. Uh, la, la, la. No, we don't. Excellent. I love it when I miss something. Well, let's use uh, Gaussian. We we'll use the Gaussian noise. There we go. So when you do that initially, the intensity is going to be way too strong. So I'm going to dial that down. Uh, I want it to be a single line. I don't want there to be any kind of spots either side. I just want it to be a bit wobbly. You know, and you can you know go down as far as you like uh, or you could exaggerate it a bit a little bit like I'm going to do and now if I go to my shape mapper we should see if I increase my pattern amounts and we go up to about 10 that that starts to come in and we've got our uh, you know nice kind of noisy line uh, between okay so this is all very well um, but this is just one uh, but we don't want just one we want more than one you know radial spoke 
So the first thing I'm going to do is actually uh, take this radius down and that will give me my inner uh, piece. But then for this line what I need to do is make more of them. So in between here and uh, the shape manager, or, uh, yeah mapper sorry, uh, I'm going to put a tile node. There we go. Uh, that's uh, yeah, quite often plugs it into the background for some reason so I'll delete that and connect it to the pattern input and then go to image input and now I get multiple lines. Now if I turn the X down I'm just going to get uh, lots of Y lines and when I come in here we can see that now I've got multiple lines and if I increase the Y amount I'm going to get more and more and if I decrease it I'll get fewer. Um, now the trick here is to just adjust our radius a little bit so we're filling a little bit more of our piece and we can do that by adjusting the radius and we can adjust the width which is the space between our uh, kind of spokes if you like or our wheels. Okay so that's basically the, the form of the web but now I want some spokes going out on each um, at each connection point uh, so we'll have a look at that in the next section okay so the next thing is to take this line and spin it round and have it coming out from a central point and we can do that with something called uh, Cartesian to polar coordinates. Uh, there we go, Par Cartesian to uh, polar grayscale. There we go. Now, if I plug that in there, you'll see that goes into a circle, which is not what we want. We want it to be kind of a star shape. So what I actually need to do is between those two, if I press space and uh, type in transform, and pick out the transform uh, 2D and rotate it 90 degrees we'll see that that's kind of what it does but it only does one you know a one is no good to me uh, I want more than one so once again I'm going to need a tile generator so between there I'll type in tile and we'll use tile generator switch the input to the image input and then yeah, we get that, no change. Uh, but if I start to mess with the X and Y amounts, we should get something out of it. And for some reason, the X and Y amount is doing nothing. Hmm, interesting. I guess sometimes, I'm not entirely sure why. Um, but yeah, I'll just use different modes basically. Uh, so what I'll use instead is the safe transform node, safe transform grayscale. Now this has a tiling option. So if I up the tiling on this, I'll get multiple lines. And if I come into our Cartesian to polar, we should then see that we get our pattern. So we've got our spokes coming out. So now I've got my two shapes. Uh, I can blend them together. So if I press space and blend, can pop that there and that there, and we'll change our blend to add, and there we go. Now the only real problem now is um, that either have too many or not enough spokes because they're not lining up with the intersections. So if I just go over to my safe transform node and reduce the amount. There we go, I've got the lines going across each piece now, which is exactly as I wanted it to. So now we essentially have a spider web. Uh, maybe not the best spider's web in the world, and I might want to actually uh, do some changes from this. Well, I should put the uh, warped one in there for a start, um, and then double click here to recalculate, and now I've got some nice little warps and uh, bends and things going on on my spokes. 
okay so uh, well we need to output this at some point in time I suppose so let's plug that into our color node and now we can see in our preview we've got our nice you know uh, spiders web kind of material um, I'm using the rounded uh, sorry not rounded uh, the sphere with two tiles uh, we could use rounded cylinder or you know anything you want really uh, so actually for this because it's I'm, I just want it to be a pattern uh, I'm going to delete the rest of our um, pieces and then we'll use this as a mask to you know make changes within painter itself so we'll publish it next and go and have a look in painter and see what we can do with it so i'll talk to you then okay then so to use this outside uh, first i'm going to double click on the background to get the properties of the graph up and i want it to be a texture generator and then we'll save our package so let's right click and save uh, I'll call it spiderweb.sbs that's good and then right click on that again and publish the SBS AR uh, same name same directory there we go and publish that's it so uh, back to substance painter now where's that it's here somewhere and I'll wait for my computer to figure out what it's doing and move my mic ever so slightly there we go right so in my directory where I exported the uh, the file uh, I've got one I made earlier and I've got my uh, new one here so I'll drag and drop that into my library and we'll add it to our assets and import There we go now we have our little spider web generator down there and just for demonstration purposes we'll go to open um, samples and I just use this tiling material let's get rid of all this there we go and I can add in a, a, a layer come on there we go uh, so for the layer I'll pop in a black mask and on that black mask I'll add a fill and I'll just drag and drop my um, web there onto that fill so um, let's do this with perhaps a metal shall we we'll have a like a golden spiders web perhaps there we go oh it's brass that's gold right so now I hope you can see uh, we have our spiders web and if I put a layer underneath it actually let's put a layer underneath and well let's put this to I don't know matte plastic and set that to black there we go so there we have our spiders web which we can use for all sorts of things uh, maybe not perfect it does certainly not you know the best way of displaying it um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty effective. And you can make all sorts of circular patterns and you, you could introduce, you know, um, some masks over the top of that, some transparency. Uh, you could break up the web. I uh, mean, for example, if I go in here and add another fill layer. And for this fill layer, what will I put on this one? We'll find, I know, some sort of texture. There we go, this one perhaps. And then we'll multiply whoops those together. And now I have a very kind of broken uh, web, which I could change if I, you know, take my opacity down. There we go. We could even put a warp over this uh, if I take that away and instead add a filter we go down find the warp filter there we go and then increase the intensity and now i'm getting a kind of fuzzier more you know warped 
area. Uh, we could put a custom noise in this, so if I I know the exact one I want for this, but I can't remember where it is, it's this one. If I pop that in there and use the source type as the custom noise, you'll see it more isolates the, the warp noise or the warp uh, areas to, you know, make it even more kind of isolated, if you like. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. Um, and I hope you can think of uh, a lot of uses for being able to make those, you know, concentric circles and putting in spokes, perhaps. Uh, I think, you know, broken glass, bullet holes, you know, uh, ripples, almost, you know, almost anything that, uh, you know, you can think of. Okay, so I will hopefully talk to you in another tutorial.